All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about hinderer knives and why I like these knives so darn much. Now, before we get into this, now, before we get into this, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, you know the deal, and the support is very much appreciated. So now let's jump right into it. All right, so like I was saying, all right, so like I was saying, today we're talking about hinderer knives or Rick hinderer knives, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and primarily, we're going to be talking about the XM18 models. So this one is a three inch or what you probably call a small hinderer XM18. And this is a 3.5 inch XM18 or what you'd probably call a large. Now, as far as it goes, um, both of them come in a wide variety of flavors as you guys could probably tell between the purple handles and the kind of ACU or digicam handles on this guy and of course by the blade shapes this one is a recurve blade shape and of course this one is a spanto so this is more of a classic styled XM18 um, with its traditional like the spanto tip was the first tip introduced with the XM18 and you know this one looks just a little bit more kind of how most people would expect a Rick Hinder or Hinder XM18 to look. This one is more of a modern version with the CPM 20 CV steel of course like I said the recurve blade shape and purple handles so you've got a little bit of flavors with both of them but those are the two that i'm going to be showing i also for size and example have a zt0562 that i have put a custom edge on and this is not a hinder exactly but i will be talking about this guy in a little bit so those are the knives kind of out of the way and now let's jump into some of the main points on why i like uh, the hinder xm18 now, I'm not going to lie, this one I recently got and is probably my favorite XM18 ever because it is purple. I really do like the color purple. And uh, this one is pretty customized. For, uh, it has quite a few aftermarket kind of details and touches that I think really set it over the edge. Now, as far as it goes when it comes to hinders, the first reason that I like hinders and what kind of started me down this road of getting them is the kind of trifecta that I've talked about a lot in or on the channel when it comes to Chris Reeve knives, Strider knives, and Rick Hinderer knives. They are really the first three kind of high-end blades that were popularized and kind of made um, made famous for the everyday carry community. Now that being said, Hinderer and Strider aren't as prevalent or as talked about outside of their groups. They do both have cult following. Strider people are very loyal to Striders. Hinderers are still very much well and alive. It's just in the mainstream, you primarily only see Chris Reeve with their Suspenza, the Inkosi, the Umzan, and so on and so forth. So when it comes down to it, the first thing that ended up leading me to getting my first Hinder XM18, this little three inch guy here, was the fact that it was a Hinder and I really did want to add one to the collection. I also will say that I really do like this three inch size, very pocketable, and for an EDC knife, that was half the reason why I chose it because when I did initially buy this knife, uh, there was only two knives at the shop. There was an XM24, which is the four inch blade version. So this is a three and a half, this is a three inch, and then they have the four inch XM24. And the XM24 is just too big for me. Uh, my large kind of knives, uh, the largest knives I'm realistically gonna pocket carry are about three and a half inches. So I ended up not going with that one because it was just a little too big, but this is actually a really nice sized blade for especially smaller EDC carry. Anyways, that was kind of the first thing that attracted me to Hinders is of course the heritage. And of course, Hinder has been making knives uh, since around the early 2000s. Of course, the XM18, I already did a video digging into the heritage and kind of history behind them, so I won't do that in this video, but they do have a rich heritage and they are very usable knives built to be high-end, no frills, but very tactical and practical blades. So that's the first part. Now the next part, and probably what's a little bit more important to me in regards to the Hinder XM18 and Hinder as a whole is the price point on these blades. Now from MSRP, or if you buy these blades new 
from Knife Center, uh, Blade HQ, any of the big names, they are actually rather expensive blades. Definitely comparable to Hinder, or sorry, definitely comparable to Chris Reeve or Strider. Usually not quite this small one, but something like this full-sized one is going to run you about $600, maybe, you know, $400 at cheapest, but sorry, about 500 at cheapest, but realistically something specced out like this one here is going to run you about 600, maybe even closer to $700. And of course there are even more expensive hinders out there that run you into the eight or $900 range. So brand new, these are very expensive um, blades. And once again, very comparable to their other competitive options. However, on the resale market that's where everything changes now this is primarily public opinion and likely it will fade or change so temporarily speaking hinders are deemed in the public opinion as lower quality high-end knives so their resale value especially on these big guys or these full-sized xm18s is very low and to be perfectly clear i got this one for 350 dollars and i saw another one uh, i looked down the list uh, in my knife form that i bought this one off of uh, and there was another one going for 375 dollars so right around 350 to 400 dollars is where most xm18s are going or uh, being sold for and that's you know not trade price that is just sale price and that means that you can get a knife that once again msrp is at about six hundred dollars for about 350 375 dollars which means you are getting a lot of bang for your buck now granted you know these knives are still notably more expensive than alternatives like you can look at this zt0562 which is essentially a high-end clone uh, that's why i like to refer to it to it as of a full-sized um, xm18 with the slicer blade so there's multiple different blade options from hinder and this replicates the slicer option um, but this also comes in 20 cv just like this guy um, and it comes with a carbon fiber handle scale and these go brand new for about 300 dollars so are they are these true hinders exactly cheap by no means, you know, you can still get a ZT that looks and does most of what this real hinder does still for cheaper. But when it comes to, if you're really wanting to get into full on high end knives, this is probably one of the best entry points, at least at this current moment. At least at this current moment, it's probably one of the best entry points because of the fact that these hinders are just you know, they, they lose so much value from MSRP and you're still getting into a really gorgeous, really customizable knife for a lot less than your Chris Reeves. Your Chris Reeves tend to hold on to their value extremely well, especially considering that they just had a price jump at the time of filming this video. They increased the price like $200. So that's certainly going to send the aftermarket up, you know, a few notches. And your Striders, of course, are still highly collectible and there's really no like, resale depreciation if anything there's more appreciation with striders so yeah these are of the kind of three original high-end knives definitely the easiest to get into and the best to kind of jump into if you are truly looking for high-end folders now once again it's always important to note that when it comes to high-end folders you know you're you can get the same performance and reasonably the same blade and style out of cheaper knives, but high-end knives just have a better refinement, better finish, better look, and of course carry a real name. This ZT0460 or sorry 562 is still at the end of the day a clone of this knife. So at the end of the day, this knife is still the original. This is just a clone. So in the end, you know, there's no replacement for the original. And for people who really do want the original, you have to pay the price. So anyways, I think hinders are, as far as high-end knives go, once again, very well priced. Now, the last part for me that I really am attracted to hinders about, even though these two are not maybe the best example, because I've never technically modded this one, uh, because I find it to be just fine. This one is pretty heavily modded i did not mod it myself the person who sold it to me did but it is again totally good and uh, in perfect condition but the modability of these knives now i'll break down what this guy has on it kind of aftermarket for this one alone it has aftermarket purple scales it has aftermarket 
purple anodized uh, liner in here. So the steel liner, which is uh, for reference, looks something like this steel liner, but this one has been anodized purple. And then flipping over to the lock bar side, you have a anodized blue um, clip and tab. So there's a lot of colors on this knife. And lastly, for performance, this has skiff bearings in it or skiff has a skiff pivot, I guess you could say, um, which essentially all that means is there's an aftermarket company that makes uh, these really nice phosphorus bronze washers that have ceramic ball bearings in them. And they are probably some of the smoothest bearings out on the market. And I really like that because one thing that is partly true about hinders is their flipping uh, action is not always the best. And you guys can see that I can get this knife to flip. It just doesn't flip super hard. So something like this ZT flips very hard and really locks in. This is true hinder with its uh, stock action does not always flip out. And if it does, it's not the strongest action. So skiffs are really nice because they are super smooth and you can tell the difference between the stock bearings on them and these ones. In addition, you guys can see that this thing literally is a drop shut knife. So if I do that, literally just drop shut. So an extremely smooth knife, but the nice part is you can get all of these things aftermarket and there is a ton of aftermarket support for hinders. And in fact, customizing hinders is heavily encouraged by the company themselves. They sell aftermarket, you know, um, things like screws, clips, uh, a lot of this stuff, like things like tabs, uh, even like the little locking disc down here, uh, as you guys can see on this guy, you can get things like that aftermarket, like purple anodized, blue, gold, whatever color. So you're heavily encouraged to customize your hinder and make it your own, which is another thing that I think is really cool. Um, you know, I do think it's cool that Chris Reeve, they send you the tools to disassemble your knife because they want you to take care of it. So similarly, hinder you know sells a lot of aftermarket parts because they want you to take apart the knife and you know really customize and make it your own and so that is something that i find really cool about hinder as well and ultimately those are kind of the biggest reasons why i like hinders why i keep adding them to my collection and why i think they are worth buying in this day and age especially considering like i've said you know the public opinion that's kind of out on them at least right now who knows how long it will last that you know a lot of people think these hinders are low quality that they're not built well and uh, from my experience personally you know they have their quirks just like striders and chris reeves and all other high not high end knives like shiro's or shirogorov's you know all of them uh, you know grismo they all have their own weird oddities and quirks to them but uh, the, these guys are definitely not slouches they're not low quality blades by any stretch of the imagination if you do get one one of the true hinders or even a hinder collab you probably will not be unimpressed so definitely worth picking up if you are in the market for high-end knives now something i will say if you do want the performance for less price and this is probably one of the biggest kickers to hinderer is that there are a lot of you know zero tolerance blades especially but there's even kershaw's like the kershaw cryo um, the zero z the ZT046, or sorry, 562, um, and several others. I think the 560 and another that is escaping my mind at the moment. But there are a number of hinderer collaborations with ZT and Kershaw that do mimic the XM18s in different flavors. So if you really do want something that you are not afraid to use and abuse, like I probably would not pull out my purple XM18 to you know, cut open a bag of rocks. Um, probably not be my first choice, but if you do want something that's a little bit more of a user and abuser, then definitely look at the ZT line of collaborations because they have basically a lot of the same attributes, performance, blade shapes that the hinderer does. Not quite the exotic blade shapes, but things like the slicer grind, you know, exist on these ZT collabs. And they offer pretty much a lot, I'd say 80% of the performance for 80% of the price. So yeah, that is, so that's kind of my uh, thought process on the hinders and uh, 
what I think about them. I still think that, once again, absolutely, I have no regrets about buying the hinders that I have. I really like them. I've even come close with at least people asking me, you know, like, hey, do you want to trade off that knife or, you know, sell that hinder? And uh, I've repeatedly said no because I do actually really like both of my hinders, my true hinders. And uh, yeah, they're definitely staying in the collection for a long while. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless. And I'm